Well, I'm going to share some, some ideas with you that I think and hope will be impactful to you in your life. Before I do, though, and before I talk a little bit more about my background, I'd like to tell you about three people, three people that I know personally. Now, person number one is a young woman that I met about a decade ago, and this individual uh, at that time had made the decision to change everything about her life, to change her where she lived, to change her career focus, to become more educated. And so she decided to earn a master's degree. That was her goal. I'm going to earn a master's degree. Um, and so this person who I understand from just talking with the, her, she had endured some difficult situations in her life, but she set this audacious goal to earn a graduate degree and to move forward with her life, to totally change who she was as an individual and as a professional. So we'll talk more about her later on, but that's person number one. Person number two, this is a young person that I knew long ago. They grew up in a home with a wonderful family, but there was a lot of uh, poverty. Um, this person was looked down on by his friends because of his family's difficult financial situation. And this person really struggled initially, but at some point in his young life, he set a goal to earn a doctorate degree and to become a professor at a university. So that's person number two. And now person number three. This is an individual who, uh, that I know that in his younger years showed some great potential. Um, he came from a difficult financial situation, but set the goal to create a publishing company um, to share music and to share ideas and words that he thought could help change the world. And so just like these three individuals, I believe each one of you, all of us have deep desires to achieve, to do, to impact and to bless people around us. And it can be difficult to achieve them. And so you might be thinking, well, why in the world would we listen to Joel Gardner or this guy? Well, let me just tell you some of my background. I have a a couple of graduate degrees in instructional technology and learning sciences. And so I've studied how people learn and how the brain changes. I've taught in our master's and in, uh, doctorate degrees of instructional design here at Franklin University for the last almost 10 years. I've spent the last 20 years studying um, design, how people learn, how uh, the, the science of human achievement. I've read hundreds of articles and books audio programs in these areas. And so my intention is to break these all down into uh, some key principles. I call them the four principles for designing your life. So we'll talk about those. I think it was mentioned, I'm the author, author of the book, Get It Done. This is something I wrote three or four years ago. And my intention was just to get onto paper some key strategies to stop procrastinating and to get uh, to get your things done that you really want to do that are important to you in your life. And so, you know, I encourage you to read it if you would like. It's, it's full of strategies, simple strategies to get unstuck quickly and get going on what's most important to you. So before we get started, though, before we really get into the topic here, I would like to know, why are you here? Now, you could ask that question sort of in this uh, metaphysical way. Why am I here on this planet on Earth? Okay, right now I'm asking, why are you here right now? Why are you here in this presentation? But I think what we've planned, what I've planned here today will, will be meaningful. Okay, so next question for you is this. Does anyone know what this is? Some of the uh, more seasoned professionals in the in this room may understand what this is. This is the game of jacks. I remember my mom teaching me how to play jacks when I was a kid. And so, you know, you, you bounce a ball and then while it's in the air, you pick up a jack and then you bounce it again, you pick up two jacks and you bounce again, you pick up three jacks. So the whole idea is to see how high you can go on the number of jacks you can pick up. And so I remember when I started my first experience in college, brand new freshman, I went down to this little tiny school in central Utah called Snow College, little junior college. Um, and there was, we, we had, they had this orientation for new students. And one of the professors, actually, I think she was a psychologist, Susan Whiting, she had everyone there sit on the floor and she had all these games of jacks. And she said, okay, we're gonna play jacks. And there's three people per group. And one person is going to uh, do the game. They're gonna play the game and see how well they can do. The other next person is going to be shouting 
affirmations at this person, it was really odd. And the third person is just going to keep track of how what the score is, how many they can get in a minute. And so we did this. And so the first first time, the shouter said, I hate this game. I always lose. I hate this game. I always lose. I hate this game. I always lose. And so you're there trying to play jacks while this person's shouting. I hate this game. I always lose. It was really odd. But then we did it again. We wrote down the number of jacks times the jacks we picked up. We did it again. And, and this time they said, I love this game. I always win. I love this game. I always win. I love this game. I always win. Doing the jacks, bouncing the ball, picking them up. And so what do you think happened? Well, of course, the times that those words, I love this game, I always win, were being shouted. Huge increase in the number of jacks that were able to be picked up. Such a simple uh, example of how there are this, there's a need to have what I call and what authors call a growth mindset. What we believe about ourselves and about the world has a huge impact on our ability to be successful. So most critical belief that you can have, okay, is a growth mindset. You can change, you can grow, you can become who you want to be, and you can have the impact that you want to have uh, on the people around you and in your life. This is what Stephen Covey calls being proactive, taking the initiative in your life, moving forward with confidence, knowing that you can make a change. Henry Ford, the classic quote, if you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right. And so there's this belief. Our fundamental beliefs have an impact on our ability to succeed. So here is a picture of my oldest daughter when she was about two years old. So let me just tell you a little about this, uh, this little girl. She was born premature um, and she had, she was moderately to severely deaf when she was born. Um, so a bilateral hearing loss, both ears. Um, we had years of, of struggle and hard work to try to help her to be able to move forward in her life. She was developmentally delayed, years of struggle. This included therapy, sign language lessons because she couldn't hear, um, doctor's appointments, just years of struggle to help her move forward. And finally, by the time she was about a year and a half or two years, she was able to sign. She was signing with us and could communicate through sign language. And so uh, this, we continued with all of these appointments to, to help her move forward. And, and we noticed something about her. She was so determined to be successful, to move forward, to reach her goals. And so around three years old, my wife, uh, beautiful wife, Katie, and Carolyn, this is my daughter, Carolyn, they were having a conversation in sign language. And in the middle of it, my daughter says, stop in sign language, stop. I want to be hearing. So here we are, we've spent three years helping her become, uh, to have language with sign language. And she says, stop, I want to be hearing. And so for the next three years, we got her enrolled in schools and worked with uh, professionals and more therapy. And so by the time she was six years old, she was hearing, she was speaking, she had language, and she was able to move forward. And so here she is now, 17 years old. Uh, she's, oh, sorry, she's still, um, she's a little person. She's four foot six, but she has so much power because she believes in herself. She knows that if she moves forward and works hard, she can accomplish anything that, that she wants. It's a, a, just an amazing person. So just before we get into these design principles, okay, these, these ways to design your life, um, believe in yourself, act on those beliefs and move forward in your life. Okay, so principles of design. I am an instructional designer. So instructional designers um, at, at the just the basic level create learning experiences to help people learn and grow. So uh, for example, I and several of the people that I work with at Franklin University, we create online courses or e-learning for the people in our university, students in our university, probably many of the courses you took at Franklin were designed by an instructional designer. We also create those for other companies, um, Fortune 500 country, co companies, inter universities internationally, all over the world, we're creating instruction to help people learn. And there are all kinds of uh, designers. You've got uh, um, interior designers, web designers, user experience designers. There's visual designers, learning designers, so the people who designed your toaster, your shirt, your cufflinks, the phone app that may be distracting you right now, you know who you are. Those, all of these were designed, okay? And there's some basic principles. And I believe that even though these, these fields design different things or in different contexts or with different tools, I believe that there are fundamental principles of design. And not only are these principles used to design things, but they can be used to design your life, okay? So that's what we're gonna be talking a little bit more about here. So 
really quickly, do you know who this person is? Oh, I'd love to know if somebody knows who this person is. Anybody? Let me give you some clues. This person is tied for the world record in her sport. World record. This person uh, has won six Olympic medals. Amazing. She has uh, won Olympic medals on five different continents in six different Olympics. Several gold medals, in fact. An amazing athlete. So who is this person? This is Kim Rode, and she competes in double trap and skeet shooting. This is uh, uh, shooting guns, right? Shooting targets with the gun. Now, I would say that even though, um, and actually, by the way, I was looking up and trying to understand what she does to become an Olympic medalist. And she actually, when she's in her training, she practices 500 to 1,000 practice shots a day. Huge dedication to her field and to her craft. Just amazing. Now, even though Kim Rhodes uh, trains for hours a day, I can say with total confidence that just with about 30 minutes of training, I can have everyone in this audience, in this, in this meeting, shooting better than Kim Rode. I can say that with full confidence, here, provided that we blindfold Kim Rode and we spin her around a couple of times so she can't see where she's shooting. Of course, we'd probably hide because then she'd have a gun blindfolded. Okay, so... And I used, you know, I tell that story and I say that and you say, well, of course, Joel, duh. Uh, how can she hit a target that she can't see? Well, here's a better goal for you. How can you reach, or better question for you. How can you reach a goal that you don't have? So are you a wandering generality like Zig Ziglar talks about? Or are you a meaningful specific? Do you think that if you asked some of the high achievers of the world, maybe you talk to like Michael Jordan or Elon Musk, and you go and talk to them and you say, well, how did you do it? How did you get to the top uh, to, to be one of the best in the world or the best in the world? Do you think they just said, well, I just sort of showed up and well, here all of a sudden I started winning or here I started building an awesome business. Now, I know you think that's, I know you know that that's not how it happened. It takes focus. It takes goals. And so that's the first principle of design. You must choose your focus. Choose your focus. And so if you're saying, oh, I have a, you know, or I'm distracted or I, I have a hard time focusing. Well, what's your focus? What's the most important thing to you? A couple of quotes here from the wisdom of the ages. Helen Keller. True happiness is not attained through self-gratification, but through fidelity to a worthy purpose. A worthy purpose. John F. Kennedy. Efforts and courage are not enough without purpose and direction. Denzel Washington. Don't aspire just to make a living. Aspire to make a difference. And then finally, Les Brown. He says, you must remain focused on your journey to greatness. You know, if you put a piece of paper out in the sun on the hottest day in the world, right? Nothing happens. But if you use a magnifying glass to focus and harness the power of the sun, you have a fire. You're able to do something with that. And so focus is critical. So at Franklin University, let me give you an example. One of the things we do is we analyze, so to, to pick the goals, for example. So we're building a course, a course that we want to design. We want to help people learn. Maybe it's a master's degree course. Well, there's an instructional designer and they work with a faculty member who knows, who has subject matter expertise. And, and so they ask them, well, what do they need to be able to know? What, are, what do our students need to be able to do when they finish this course? They, they go out and they look at professional organizations and what they publish as the skills and knowledge that, that professionals need. Um, we talk to advisory boards, professionals working in the field. We try to pull all of that together into what, these clear goals, okay? What we do then is we document what we call clear objectives. We call them learning objectives or learning outcomes. Now, these are just simple phrases that, that clearly state what the learner needs to be able to do. So we document those things and make it totally clear. And then finally, the third thing that an instructional designer will do is eliminate the extraneous. Did you know that if there's too much information, you probably know this, too much information in a learning experience, a course or a training, you don't learn as much. It's harder to focus on what's most important. Our brains are finite. You have to focus in, or sorry, our brains are, are bring in a finite amount of information. I believe our brains are infinite, but our brains are finite in the amount of information they can bring in. So you have to focus on the most important information. So that's the third principle of choosing a focus. And just like a designer 
chooses their focus. They focus on designing, on achieving specific things with their, with their designs. You must choose your focus. So let's talk a little bit more about these ideas of analyzing needs and eliminating the extraneous, do documenting clear objectives. So here's one, one thing that I've seen in the past and thought about, it's actually in the, my book to a degree, um, I talk about this. So if you wanna find out, this is just, by the way, speaking of career focus. And so if you wanna refocus yourself in your career and how you're spending your time in your career um, and have an impact, uh, here are some four things to consider. Number one, well, what are your interests? What do you like? What do you care about? right? Be totally clear about this. And by the way, I, I recommend you just take some time to do this. Get a sheet of paper, put four columns in it and start writing. What are my interests? Just write down the things you're interested in. In the next column, write down your strengths, your expertise. What are you trained in? What are you good at? What do you uh, love to develop and improve at? Okay. Write down those strengths. Just take a lot of time, write them down. The next is what do people need or want? What do they need or want? And so you can start to see if I match my interests with my strengths and what people need or want. This sort of starts to emerge as, okay, maybe there's a path here. That's something I can focus on in my career. And then finally, what can you get paid for? This is critical, right? Uh, if you can, <laughs> you got to have money, right? We live in a society where you need to have money so you can survive. What can you get paid for and still be able to do all of these things and have an impact that you want to have in your life and on the people around you? So that's, uh, that's analyzing your needs. Now, you have to write clear objectives. You have to have clear goals. And so uh, for me in my life, one of those goals has been, uh, you know, years ago, I said, I want to be a faculty member. I want to be a faculty member. And that was me at the bottom. I'm looking at the top of the mountain. I want to be a faculty member. So met a faculty member, um, specifically teaching instructional design. And so this was uh, the goal that I set for myself. Now, when you write these goals, you have to be clear. Um, you have to, you know, you have the SMART goals or the SCRAM goals or the RAM goals or whatever those acronyms are, but it has to basically be specific and measurable. So write those goals. What are your goals right now? Let's think about just professional goals, for example. What are your professional goals right now? Do you want to be the VP of an organization? What organization? What area? Uh, what do you want to do as your VP? What do you want to do? Do you want to earn a doctorate degree, a master's degree? Where are you going to study for it? How are you going to pay for it? How are you, you want to start a small business or a YouTube channel and have success? Whatever it is, get totally clear about what that goal is. Articulate it clearly. And so I would say, if you're having a hard time feeling focused, step one, you've got to be clear about what you want to focus on and what you want to achieve. So that's choose your focus. Oh, one last thing. You have to eliminate the extraneous. So uh, one friend of mine who recently earned her doctorate degree um, as I was kind of working with her, I had the, the just joyous privilege of being able to work with her on her studies. She decided as she was approaching the end where you have to do this giant dissertation research, she said, you know what, I'm going to have to let go of my service in some of these professional organizations for a little while. I'm going to have to let go of some of the side gigs that I have that I, are really fun for me and that I really care about so that I can focus. You have to eliminate the extraneous. So what's the extraneous thing right now that's getting in your way of being successful? Sorry, my alarm's going off here. Is it uh, excessive television, gaming, or relaxing? Is it too many side projects? Is it your phone that's distracting you? I know it's distracting you right now. Put that phone down right now, right? Uh, is it your overtaxing job that doesn't allow you to see through to what's most important to you and to move forward? Whatever it is, you got to get rid of that thing. And this can be big things like a distract, a, an overly burdensome job. It can be small things like your phone or like your, your desk is messy. Whatever it is, eliminate the extraneous so you can focus on what's more important to you. Here I was talking about phones distracting and then I had an alarm go off on my phone. Curse it. Okay, just kidding. All right, well, let's keep going here. So again, pick what's your Olympic gold? What is your Olympic gold? What is the one huge thing that you want to do in your life? Okay. Actually, let's think about that a little bit more for a second. So it's the beginning of 2021, but I would like to just, let's play a game for just a second. Okay. Just, just play along with me just, just for fun. Okay. So close your eyes for a moment and just pretend and imagine that you are now at the end of 2021. We've gone through the whole year, January, February, March. And, and you know what? You're looking back, you're at a new year's Eve party. You're looking back and you realize, wow, 
This was my year. 2021 was my breakthrough year. Just imagine that. You're looking back at 2021. You feel pride. You feel gratitude. You feel uh, uh, excitement, fulfillment. Just imagine that. So I want you to think here for a second. If you were to achieve your most important, meaningful goals in 2021, and let's limit it to one or two goals, one or two goals, what would that be? What would it be? Most important goal, an amazing 2021. What would it be? So I would like you to write that down because your heart and your mind will tell you where to place your focus. Take some time to be specific about these. If, you're, if you have a, a, you know, a goal to um, start an Etsy shop, be clear. How many items, types of items are you going to sell? Um, and then how many of each items do you plan to sell this year, for example? Uh, if you want to start the graduate degree, what program? What, when will you start? What courses will you take? Who will you have help you and support you as you're doing that? Get clear about these goals. Um, my, just, just to be transparent here, my personal goal this year is to restore my health. You know, I've been under a lot of uh, hard work and stress over the last several years, and I've realized this is the most important goal for me, restore my health. So, you know, it's nutrition, exercise, a lot more sleep, right? Quality sleep. And so that's, that's my keystone, my, my killer, most important goal that I'm going to do for this year. Actually, just an interesting story about some goals that my wife and I set last year. At the beginning of 2020, we set a goal to go on a trip to Florida, to take our family, our family of five kids, seven people, and go on a trip to Florida. And so, you know, whenever you take a vacation, it requires a huge amount of work and planning to get it ready. You have to, you know, we had to say, okay, well, how are we going to get there? Let's make a map and how are we going to travel and maybe we'll stop on the way because we have a billion kids and it's a long drive. And so how are we going to, how are we going to pay for this? What do we got to bring? Where are we going to stay when we get there? Um, what kind of activities do we want to do? Just lots of things that you have to manage and plan for with these vacations. So this is something we set out at the beginning of 20, 2020. And so we planned, we worked on it over the year. And then just in this last December, we were able to go on an amazing trip maybe the coolest vacation we've been on in our entire lives as a family. We saw some, you know, our kids love the beach. We played on the beach. We found some awesome shells. And here's a little hermit crab that one of our kids had. Um, here's the kids on the beach just having a great time. So we were able to create some just really great experiences. So to create a, a wonderful experience, again, like a vacation, you have to plan. You have to have a, just a solid plan for how you're going to do it. And to create and design your life, the life you desire, you have to plan how you're going to accomplish the things that will make that life the way you want. So for first is choose your focus, but then step two, again, this is plan your path. So designers now, let's, let's talk about designers again. How, how do we uh, plan our path? Well, a few things, okay? First, designers typically put together some kind of a blueprint, okay? And so there's this principle of creating something uh, spiritually or, or mentally or metaphysically before it's created physically, okay? Spiritual creation, physical creation. And so that's step one, create a blueprint of what it is that you want to have happen. What are the steps you got to go through? When you're a designer, you apply these specific principles and patterns that you know will work. At architects, when they're putting together a blueprint, they have specific patterns and principles. Designers do the same thing. You got to create spiritually before physically. The next is create a timeline with action items on how are you going to do this? Designers do this. When we're putting together a course, we usually have around three or four months. We, months, we map it out and we make it happen. What are the steps? Be clear about the specific steps you're going to take to reach that goal. You got to write these down. You have to plan them out. And when are you going to do these things? Get clear about how you're going to get there. And then finally, you have to anticipate the design constraints. Every design takes place within constraints and every life happens within constraints. So know what those are and work with those. So just like designers plan how they're going to do their work and they, and they plan their path, you've got to plan your path. Um, great men and women don't achieve success suddenly or without effort. They're working late into the night while others are watching TV or sleeping in. So some more quotes of wisdom from the ages. Alexander Clark, let's watch well our beginnings and the results will manage themselves. Greg McCune, remember that if you don't prioritize your life, 
Someone else will. So one thing that I would recommend that you do, just try this out. What you've got to do is focus your mind, okay? You can actually turn your mind into a heat-sinking missile, a heat-sinking missile. Turn your mind into a focused instrument to help you accomplish the goals that you have. And how do you do that? You ask. You ask questions. And the most important question might be, how can I achieve my goal in the most effective, efficient way possible? Ask that question over and over and over. Allow your mind to help you learn and then achieve those goals. So some ways you can do this. Just learn, right? Have the question in your mind and then go learn. Read books, uh, research, listen to podcasts, watch YouTube videos, whatever it is. Just learn how you can accomplish your goals. The more knowledge you have in your mind, the more bits of information that you have in your mind, the more it, you're, you can actually create new things, new solutions, new paths with that information. So constant learning. The second is ask others. You can also ask others who've done what you want. Ask the experts. You'd be so surprised at how much experts are willing to share their expertise and help you move forward in your life. Trust your mind. Ask your subconscious mind. Ask God, the universe. Ask all of these things, the questions that will help you to reach your goals. Here's an experiment that I recommend that you, that you go through, okay? Tonight and do it for a week, okay? Have your, as you're going to bed, have your goal in your mind, okay? My goal is to restore my health and to lose X number of pounds or to sleep these number of, have that goal in your mind. Okay. And then ask yourself, ask your mind or, or in prayer or whatever your, your approach is, ask, what is the fastest and most effective way to reach this goal? Have that question in your mind as you go to sleep. And then when you wake up, when you wake up, ask the question again and sit down before anything else, take out a piece of paper and just write down every idea that comes into your mind to answer that question. Write them down. Just try it. I tried this the other day and I was shocked at the ideas that I had for moving forward with a specific goal that I have. It's truly miraculous. You know, speaking of the miraculous, um, as a parent of five children, sometimes it can be extremely difficult and even miraculous to help a child to do something that they're supposed to do. So just an example, the other day I was um, here at work and my daughter needed, in my office at home working, and my daughter just had a few, one of my daughters had a few things that she needed to do for her jobs, right? And so I went to talk to her and she was just crying. She was freaking out. She was sitting on the floor, just having a difficult time crying. And, and so she couldn't even fathom the idea of vacuuming the hall. That was one of the tasks. And so I said, okay, well, just, just try something. Okay. Just try something. Uh, just time yourself and see how long it takes you to get your goals done. So she's like, well, I could do that. So she timed herself and it took her 15 minutes, maybe 16. I can't remember if it was 15 or 16 minutes to do all the tasks that she had to do. So here she was flipping out, crying, oh, it's going to be so hard. But once she just took action, she got it done so quickly. And so that's our next principle. That's the next principle of designing your life. You've got to take action. In the world of design, this is where you actually create the thing. You remember you did that spiritual creation. Now you create the thing that you had designed. That's where the family takes the vacation. And it's where you take your action toward the goal that you've set for yourself. So in instructional design, the creating learning experiences, we, we build, right? We create whatever it is that we had designed, a course, a video, uh, an interactive module, a game, whatever it is, um, we create those things. We also check progress as you're taking these actions, right? As we're doing stuff, as we're designing things, we check progress. How are things going? Are we meeting our deadlines? And then finally, we uh, overcome obstacles. Now, you always have obstacles. It, you know, life is full of obstacles. And so, for example, uh, there, there might be obstacles in your way and the goals you're trying to achieve. But whatever the case, you must face those obstacles and overcome the obstacles. We'll talk about that more in just a second. So there are some fundamental laws, right? So you have a yield sign here. You have to yield when there's a yield sign. And so there are fundamental laws of design, right? And one of the most, and just like there's fundamental laws of design and learning, there are fundamental laws of how to achieve your goals. And one of these is um, just the simple at truth that actions bring results. Actions bring results. So after all, nothing can come from corn but corn, right? A corn seed. Nothing can come from wheat, uh, from a wheat, but a wheat seed, right? If you plant seeds, uh, apple seeds, you're not going to get any peaches. You're just not. Uh, the farmer doesn't say, earth, I need you to give me a whole bunch of uh, fruit and vegetables. And then I promise next year, I'm going to plant, plant some seeds, a promise. The employee can't say to the boss, you know what, boss, just give me a raise. And I promise I'm going to work super hard next quarter. 
right? Doesn't work that way. Actions produce results. You can't say to the stove of life, give me some heat stove and I promise I'll put some wood in you later on. You just can't. And you cannot create a life and impact others. You can't design a life without putting the required efforts in. To receive blessings, you must pay the price. This is the fundamental law of the universe. Uh, whatever you sow, that's what you'll reap. Some more wisdom from the ages here, from the good thinkers. Denzel Washington, without commitment, you'll never start. But more importantly, without consistency, you'll never finish. Goals on the road to achievement cannot be achieved without discipline and consistency. You have to take action. Zig Ziglar said, uh, you, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. You know, one person lamented that she, if she started her degree, she was at the age of 46, if she started her degree, then she would be 50 before she finished, by the time she finished. And so the question was then asked, well, how old will you be if you don't start your degree in four years? Either way, the time passes. You're never too old, by the way, to set new goals and move in new directions. Nelson Mandela was 75 years old when he became president of South Africa. Now we know Joe Biden. He'll be the oldest U.S. president to assume the presidency at 78. Larry Makem reportedly ran, uh, started running marathons when he was 52, and he ran hundreds more by the time he was 72. So you're never too old to set and achieve your goals. And you know what? Now's the time. Now's the time to take action on those. You know, speaking of goals, there was one restaurant manager um, who had he was just legendary for his service. Uh, and he just prided himself on having satisfied customers. But there was one customer that came into his restaurant one day um, and he turned out to be a really difficult customer. This customer um, basically complained. He was complaining, specifically he was complaining about the bread. He only had two pieces of bread. Now this, you know, the manager did everything they could to make him happy, but they just weren't happy. But they came back the next day. So he said, okay, now we're going to give him four pieces of bread, make sure he's happy this time. But the person complained again. And so he's, you know, this guy, it's his pride to have satisfied customers. So he comes in again, a third day in a row. And so this manager says, you know what, we're going to get, they have these huge loaves of bread, five foot long loaf of bread. We're going to put these loaves of bread uh, in front of him, cut it down the middle. And he's have these two giant pieces of bread. And so but after everything was over and he was finishing up, the manager came out to talk to the guy and he said, you know, everything was just fine, but I see you're back to serving only two pieces of bread. All right. So just a joke. But the point is, we always have difficulties. There will be difficulties in life. This is just how it is. In fact, there's one person who I'd like to tell you about who, who had difficulties. She was born in St. Louis and her parents divorced when she was very young. She lived with her grandparents. Um, she, she went through sexual abuse, homelessness, teenage pregnancy. Uh, she was forced into pro prostitution. And you know, anyone with these kinds of background might seem to be doomed to a life of failure. So Marguerite, who is this? This is actually Maya Angelou, and who, in her life, she became an acclaimed actress, a writer, an, uh, an activist, an award-winning author. Uh, she, she spoke at a president's inauguration. She was given over 50 honorary degrees um, and awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2010. So this woman, amazing individual who was intimately familiar with obstacles and difficulties, she wrote, you may encounter defeats many defeats, but you must not be defeated. In fact, it may be necessary to encounter the defeats so you can know who you are and what you can rise from, how you can still come out of it. Your difficulties build your strength and ability to move forward toward your goals. Same, same idea here with Walt Disney. All the adversity I've had in my life, all my troubles and obstacles, all they've all strengthened me. This is Walt Disney's quote, you may not realize it, when it happens, but a kick in the teeth may be the best thing in the world for you. So whatever those difficulties are that you're facing right now, you can, they, they turn them into your good, learn from them, grow, strengthen your resolve, strengthen your power. One last quote from this individual, this is Tracy Austin. He trained me in the principles of coaching and serving students. And one of the things that he said was there is no failure. There's only feedback. There are no mistakes just lessons learned. And if you know Tracy, he overcame so many obstacles and blessed hundreds of lives. Um, and even there's an award that's named after him because of the dedication and the service he gave uh, for a quarter of a century to students. So a few key strategies, just talking about this idea of adversity. If you're experiencing difficulty right now, here's what I recommend, okay? Number one, 
Flood your mind with positive, good things. Flood your mind with scripture, motivational literature, positive people, uh, motivational audio programs. Just flood your mind with the positive. Uh, Remember that growth mindset. Without the growth mindset, you're not going to be able to move forward. So fill your mind with that. Flood your mind with those good things. The second is ask, ask, ask for solutions. Ask yourself. Ask your your, uh, peers. Ask experts who have done what you want to do. Ask the universe, right? Ask in prayer. Whatever it is, ask for solutions. And then finally, keep moving forward. You've got to keep moving forward. Don't stop. Don't stop. You will have obstacles. It'll be difficult. Uh, You'll have setbacks, whatever it is, but don't give up. Keep moving forward. Now, this doesn't mean blindly follow whatever path, this rigid path that you set for yourself. If something isn't working, you have to adapt. You have to account for design principle four, which is learn and adapt. You know, simply try an approach. And if it doesn't work, try something else. And if that doesn't work, try something else, right? Don't give up on the goal. Just make sure you're taking the path that will get you there. A few more quotes of the wisdom from the world. Gordon B. Hinckley, a truly educated person never ceases to learn. Earl Nightingale, an ongoing education is vital to stay vital. And Einstein, you've probably heard this one, we cannot solve problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. You have to think, you have to be able to learn and continue to grow in new ways so that you can solve new problems. Move forward. So for designers, uh, we ask for feedback. When we design something, so we create a course, we ask for feedback. We ask for feedback from the learners, from instructional, other instructional designers, from subject matter experts to make sure and to improve and grow as we're moving forward with that design. We, uh, we are constantly learning. I know a couple of professionals, for example, where I work at Franklin and the International Institute for Innovative Instruction. These are people with doctorate degrees, but some of them are reading books over just tons and tons of books. Some of them are earning more graduate degrees. Myself, I've even decided to enroll some into in some graduate school uh, graduate courses so that I can keep learning and developing myself. So you have to adapt. You have to adjust. Don't give up on the good goals, but give up on your approach if it's not working and move to something else. So just ask yourself for a moment, what are you persisting in doing right now? that isn't getting you the results and the outcomes and the impact you desire. Just think about that. What are you doing with your life, with your time, with your energy, with your focus that isn't getting you the results you desire? I encourage you to change that. Think of how you can change and and adapt. Second question, what are you doing this year to gain new knowledge, create new thinking, continually educate yourself and adjust your plans for achievement? Have a way that you're constantly flowing new knowledge and new information into your minds. It can be professional information, it can be motivational, and it can be the wisdom of the ages. But whatever it is, bring that new information into your mind. So let's return to those three people that I talked about at the beginning of this presentation. Remember, person number one, this is the young woman I met almost a decade ago who uh, decided she was going to change so many aspects of her life, earn a graduate degree, shift fields. And so now today, this person just recently graduated with a doctorate degree, a master's and then a doctorate degree in instructional design. She has moved into the field of instructional design and has received several promotions within the field. She's truly transformed her life. And I believe she's done it because she's applied these principles that we've talked about here. Person number two, remember, this is the person that uh, who um, grew up in a home, a great home with a great family, but there was some poverty and, and had a hard time with the people around him. Um, and actually, this is me. I was surrounded by uh, a lot of people that, strangely, in, in my young life, I was just constantly teased and made fun of. and It was difficult. But s- somehow, later in my life, I learned the principles of goal setting f- through, from some key leaders that I had in my life as a young adult. And I learned these principles of goal setting, and I was able to just totally transform who I was. And I'm still working to transform who I am and reach some of those goals. I've, I've re- met the goal to become a professor, to teach, to speak, to thousands of people all over the world. It's just been a wonderful experience and just grateful for these design principles that helped me get there. Person number three now, person number three. Um, This is a close associate who had immense talent as a youth and they had that goal to launch and be successful in this uh, publishing music and, and, and words. But this person uh, succumbed to some of the distractions and pressures and stresses of life 
he became more negative. He was distracted by all these different things. And in fact, um, in the later years of his life, he found himself in an ambulance being transported to the hospital with a life-threatening problem. And I had the unique opportunity to spend a few minutes with this person. And I, I spoke with them and, I, and, and heard what they, what they were talking about, what they had to think at this moment, a crucial moment in their life. They regretted that they hadn't focused their life on those things that mattered to them most. They realized they wouldn't be able to accomplish the things that were most important to them. And it was a really sad moment to see that happen to someone I care about so much. A few last thoughts. One more quote from Les Brown. Now, amazing speaker here. I'm not going to do justice, but I'll quote him at length here for just a moment. He says, imagine if you will, being on your deathbed and standing around your bed are the ghosts of the dreams and the ideas and abilities given to you by life. But you never pursued those dreams. You never acted on those ideas. You never used those gifts. And there they are standing around your bed, looking at you with large, angry eyes, saying, we came to you. And only you could have given us life. And now we must, die, we must die forever. So that's the end of the quote. I don't want to end my life thinking those things and thinking about the dreams and the visions and the hopes that I had, the desires I had to bless other people. I do not want to end my life knowing that I didn't accomplish those. Coming back to Maya Angelou. Now, we've gone through some difficulties, by the way. Here's a quote uh, from one of her beautiful poems that she read at a presidential inauguration, inauguration. Listen to these words. Let them change how you feel right now. History, despite its wrenching pain, cannot be unlived. But if faced with courage, need not be lived again. Lift up your eyes upon the day breaking before you. Give birth again to the dream. Women, children, men, lift up your hearts. Each new hour holds new chances for new beginnings. Do not be wedded forever to fear. The horizon leans forward, offering you space to place new steps of change. Powerful words. We've experienced what I would say in 2020, a difficult or strange or even devastating for many people. And so with the turn uh, to the new year, let's embrace the words written by Alfred Tennyson in his great poem, which was later turned into a hymn, Ring Out Wild Bells. And I'm just going to quote a few lines from that. Let's have this be our anthem for the new year. The year is dying in the night. Ring out wild bells and let him die. Ring in the valiant men and free. The larger heart the kindlier hand, ring out the old, ring in the new, ring out the false, ring in the true. Now is the time. Today is your day. And this is your year to design your life. Believe that you can create the good you wish to see in the world. Focus yourself on the things that matter most to you. Create a doable, actionable plan for reaching your goals and take action. Constantly learn and improve this year. Persevere in the face of obstacles and move confidently in the direction of your dreams. And you'll find yourself at the end of 2020 closer to and even living the dreams and the future that you have imagined for yourself and for blessing other people.